In this video, I hope to demystify the term velocity saturation and show how it's a consequence of coupling between electrons and high energy phonons. I mentioned earlier that there's a speed limit for charge carriers inside of a semiconductor. That speed limit is set by collisions with high energy phonon modes. And it's a little different for electrons and for holes. This graph in front of us for silicon at room temperature illustrates it, I think, fairly clearly. The effect of electric field on carrier velocity, we expect it to be linear. Velocity equals mobility times the electric field. It should be a straight line when you plot velocity versus the electric field. This leveling off is called velocity saturation. It happens somewhere around 10 to 100,000 volts per centimeter with a velocity in this range of up to 1 times 10 to 7 centimeters per second. I'll point out a few things here. Why it happens. Charge carriers start going so fast because they've been accelerated by the electric field that they start to collide with higher energy phonons. Normally, charge carriers collide with the low energy phonons called acoustic phonons. That's how they might lose their energy from scattering normally. But you accelerate them past that, you know, they go faster and faster. Eventually, they have enough energy that they couple to optical phonon modes. And then their energy gets given to those vibrations. The electrons will, when they start to interact with these optical phonons, they're going at a good clip, about 10 to the 5th meters per second or so. We have this speed limit of about 10 to the 7th centimeters per second. The curves that you see here are described by an expression like this. So velocity is normally just mobility times the electric field at low electric fields. But as the electric field gets higher, you can't ignore this term in the denominator. Look what the term in the denominator does. At low electric field, E, the denominator is just 1. At extremely high electric field, you can ignore this 1 plus and stop and pause for a minute and think what happens to the expression at very high electric field. The denominator becomes E over E saturation. This E sat is just a constant. And the exponents cancel. The velocity becomes mu times E sat, which is a constant, at high electric field. And so the velocity becomes a constant equal to that mu E sat. The constant called E sat has a physical meaning. It's the electric field, depending on whether it's an electron in a hole, 50 or 70 percent of the way to saturation. The only difference between electrons and holes then in this behavior is the value of n, one for holes, two for electrons. A little bit about why it's important. It does affect the IV characteristics that we're going to calculate for MOSFETs. So that's coming up in chapter six. Another thing is that where the velocity saturates has very little to do with doping because the interaction that sets this saturation is between the charge carriers and the vibrations of the silicon atoms, if it happens to be a silicon or you know the matrix atoms. The impurities aren't the source of this, this uh, slowing down. Let's do a little problem here. In silicon, the mobility of an electron is 1400 square centimeters per volt second, and you can look that up yourself in table 2-1. So let's find the value of E sat, and then we'll look at what it really means physically. First thing I'd point out is that if you have arrived at the point where you are saturated, the actual electric field is much larger than that E sat. From the graph, you can see that an electron in silicon saturates at about 1, maybe 1 1.04 times 10 to the 7th centimeters per second. So we'll just use that, 1 times 10 to the 7th, for the velocity. When you are in saturation, you're at a very high electric field. The reason why you're saturated is because E over E sat is a large number. So E is much larger than E sat. So we can simplify the expression. Saturation velocity is you know, 10 to the 7th. The mobility get off the table, 1, 2 dash 1. This denominator you can simplify by neglecting the 1 plus because E is so large. It boils down to this. This is what you need to remember. V saturation is mobility times E saturation. And so you calculate saturation electric field of 7,100 volts per centimeter. 
typically, uh, yeah, most people think in terms of volts per meter for electric field, but in this course, we do use volts per centimeter, so I should probably have circled that one instead. I, there's a little comment here. I need some explanation. So Vsat, saturation velocity, is the speed that an unhindered particle would have at a field of Esat. So let's see. Let's go back to our graph. Now I've added something. First, this vertical line is the saturation electric field that we just calculated, about 7,000 volts per centimeter. If I go way down here to low electric field, where velocity versus E is a straight line, and I take that straight line behavior and I just extrapolate it out, that's what this dashed red line is. It's, it's the low electric field velocity which is linear and E field extrapolated way out. When it reaches Vsat, which is a little over 1 times 10 to the 7th, you will be at Esat, which we just calculated. And saturated velocity is the velocity that an unhindered particle would, that is, there's no collisions with optical phonon modes, only with acoustic phonon modes. And one last little point is that you could go back and do this whole thing now for holes. And you might want to just go and do that and using th this mobility from the same table and using this saturation velocity read approximately off this graph. And you you'll get ESAT is larger, 17,000 volts per centimeter instead of 7,000. The important thing there is holes have a lower mobility. Therefore, it takes more electric field to get them up to speed, up to the energy that, that they need in order to interact with optical phonons. It would make sense then that holes have a larger saturation electric field. Keep that in mind too, that holes do saturate at about two to three times the field that electrons saturate at.